Brought to you by Hula Frog. Local things for kids to do. HulaFrog.com Hi guys and welcome to Illusionist Michael Howell Live. I'm so excited to be able to uh, do this uh, while I'm locked up in my apartment in quarantine right now. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, the first episode we're going to do some science experiments, talk about animals, give you guys a little insight on the business, what it's like to be a magician. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'd like to uh, start off by saying uh, thank you to our sponsor Hula Frog. Hula Frog uh, connects parents to local events and businesses and their community as well as to each other. <laughs> okay, so thank you uh, Hula Frog for being a sponsor to uh, Illusionist Michael Howell Live. Uh, it means a lot. I'd also like to thank a few of uh, some other, a few of some other, some other people that have helped this show um, build. Uh, Arizona Families for promoting and being a part of the show. I'd like to thank Macaroni Kids. And Mildred and Dildred, you've been a part of my career and my life for a very long time, so thank you so much for all your support. And let's not forget Williams Magic Shop. They're located at Trail Dust Town here in Tucson, Arizona. And man, I grew up going to that shop. Uh, that family is just a wonderful family, and they're super supportive of upstart magicians. So guys, thank you so much for all your support and uh, being there and uh, really supporting that in my career and business. And as you can see, we got our dogs barking here. So we're here, we're here right now in our living room doing this for you guys. Uh, well, I'd like to get uh, Jerrica uh, come up here. I'm gonna do some card magic. I know a lot of you uh, heard about the show and are thinking, oh, it's a magic show. Um, and that that is part of what it is, but I wanted to do uh, a talk show as well uh, involving magic and um, and interviews and science and kind of giving you guys an idea of what it is we do in this business. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So Jerrica, as we as you guys see here, we have the five of clubs, a lovely assistant. Usually I do this with an audience member. Right now my audience member, since we're in quarantine, <laughs> is Jerrica. She's gonna give me a beautiful autograph and I don't have to ask for her phone number because I already got that, guys. <laughs> If you guys, for those of you guys that don't know that, me and Jerrica are engaged to be married in December. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this card right here. I'm folding that card up. Now it's really hard. I want to make sure you guys can see that. Jerrica, what I'd like you to do is put that card in your mouth. That's right, guys. That means she doesn't have, that keeps her from talking. So that's good. <laughs> um, now you guys were wondering, oh, what does he do? You know, you don't know Jerrica, but she likes to talk. No, I'm just kidding. All right, now what I'm going to do as I'm going to, look at that, I just used my mouth, sign this card here. As you can see, it is the two of diamonds. As you guys can see, we are here with the dogs barking in my apartment. But that's okay, this is a live show. And at a live show, anything is possible. Here we go. Jerrica, on the count of three, what I'd like you to do is tap that card. Ready, one, two, three. Do me a favor, take the card out, show it off to the audience. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna put the lid on the Sharpie. Show it off real close so you guys can see it. My card has appeared in her mouth and her card with her extremely beautiful autograph, much better than mine. <laughs> Ladies and gents, there you go. The cards have switched places. Big round of applause for Jerrica. Good job, Jerrica. <laughs> okay, now, um, growing up as a magician, I have always been a big fan of science. And it's really cool because math and ma and science and magic and all that stuff goes together. I was actually homeschooled from fourth grade out. And I was never um, a big fan of your average everyday school. And the reason I was homeschooled so I could learn in creative ways. So whether that be opening up my own little store so I can sell things. And... Uh, <laughs> the dogs are still barking. Uh, and, uh, and that's how I learned. So uh, right now, I'm gonna do a science experiment. Uh, it's gonna be cool using some vinegar, which is in this red cup. And we're gonna use some baking soda and a balloon. So this is really cool. We're gonna have uh, my beautiful fiance, Jerrica, come back on the screen. She was babysitting on her. We have four dogs, guys, believe it or not, four dogs, and they're all chihuahuas. So you need the baking soda. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pour baking soda inside of the balloon. So if you guys have uh, baking soda and vinegar at your house, um, and kids, if you uh, wanna do this, just ask your parents for help. 
You just pour a little bit in there. I think that's probably good. What do you think? Yeah. Put a little bit of baking soda in a balloon. So we have that. I'm gonna put that right there for now. And then if you have like a bottle or something, you can put vinegar in, put a little vinegar in. I really don't like the smell of vinegar. <laughs> I don't know why I sniffed it, guys. All right, so then you got the vinegar in your nice little bottle. You have the balloon with the baking soda. Then you wanna stretch the balloon. This is the hard part right here, guys. Oh, over like so, so it looks like that. But watch this, this is really cool because with the baking soda and the vinegar inside of this jar, it blows up the balloon just a little bit. Maybe I didn't put enough baking soda in. Oh wait, you know what? I used the wrong balloon. That could be, never have an extra balloon on the table. And that's, that was just to see if you guys were ready. Let's try that again. Here we go. This is exciting, guys. What? That is pretty cool. I saw that the other day. I was like, I have to do that on my show. So try that at home. If you don't have a balloon or uh, baking soda or vinegar right now, go out to the grocery store. Whew, got vinegar everywhere. Uh, and try that, because that is pretty awesome. Uh, I actually, uh, I got inspired. I was like, oh, that's a cool uh, science experiment. But later on, like, we'll talk more how science and magic uh, intertwine, because in my magic shows, I actually use science uh, to produce and do some of the tricks that I do in my show. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, we have a lot of dreams. Uh, being in quarantine has given us a lot of time to think about what we want to do uh, in the future and how we can move forward in the future. As far as all of our events, we postponed them to September, October, and later on to 2021, um, because that's all we can do. Uh, one of the things we want to do is uh, start our very own radio show, which is uh, going to be a lot of fun and we can kind of do something similar to what we're doing here, but it'll be a platform to give artists, local artists, a chance to come on and talk about what they do and just kind of talk about what's happening in the community and just talk about nonsense. Uh, I'm kind of a lighthearted guy and I like doing things to make people laugh. So that's kind of one of the things that I'd like to do while being... Uh, you know, while getting our name back out there. Another thing uh, I've been talking to my buddy Kyle uh, about is doing a tour and he wants to be my tour manager. So I said, why not? So we've set up a, a tour that we're working on producing, uh, kind of going around and doing magic shows, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, we've been creating a lot of new illusions. In fact, I have a brand new illusion that um, is just built. Unfortunately, I didn't get to premiere it. It was supposed to premiere April 4th at the Fox Theater in Tucson, but that's okay. Don't worry, that illusion gets to premiere at the Burger Performing Arts Center on um, September 19th uh, in a show called Magical Journey. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Tickets on the website, illusionismichaelhowell.com. Just a little plug there. Um, so hopefully we get to do that. And uh, not only have I been working on creating new stuff, but I've been working on card tricks, more close-up magic and things that uh, could better my career. It's funny, I started out calling myself an illusionist and I really wasn't big on close-up magic. But the cool thing about close-up magic is you can be anywhere and pull out a deck of cards and do card tricks or coin tricks. It's, it's something you can have on you, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, but I will always, to this day, own, uh, really care and love um, illusions and stuff. I love close-up, but illusions are my specialty. Uh, I am offering online magic classes. So if you guys want to learn all skill levels, all types of magic, whether it be close-up, stage illusion, all that, anything, any type of magic you guys want to learn, um, I can do it. We got uh, pricing, uh, $25 for a, a 30 minute class or $35 for a one hour class. And I'm sure if you do four classes, we could work out a deal. Just email me at illusionismichaelhowell at gmail.com. Uh, again, Hula Frog, thank you so much for being a sponsor of the show. Uh, also, I have uh, four half hour uh, magic specials that are gonna be different. They're gonna be edited and they're gonna be like, you know, like a fancy DVD uh, form. Uh, and the first uh, one is just a half an hour full on like magic show. So half hour full of magic. 
Uh, the second one is a half hour of science and magic. So I'll go in more detail on how science and magic can kind of correlate. And I'll try to look into the schools and see what they're teaching science-wise uh, so I can incorporate some magic into what is in our education. Uh, as far as the third special, it'll be math. And again, making sure I'm in regulation of what the schools are teaching with the math uh, and what certain age levels have to learn. Um, so that'll be the fourth episode. Uh, and oh, actually, it'll be the third episode. And then uh, the fourth episode will be a, one, a 101, Magic 101. So learning magic from, you know, beginning. So basic magic all the way to intermediate. Uh, and then we'll move on and do more specials. Now, those specials will be for purchase. They'll probably be about $10 a special, uh, maybe cheaper, I don't know. Still trying to decide. Uh, so that's what I got coming up in the future as far as specials and, and things that you guys can um, watch and buy. Uh, but again, take magic classes, guys. It's something fun to do while we're here and uh, you know, looking for things to do. Now, I like to do magic shows because Oh, the dogs are barking again. There we go. I like to do magic shows because it makes me happy. And not only do I like uh, doing magic and making myself happy, but I like doing it because it makes you happy. It makes you smile. If I could put a smile on one person's face a day, I've done my job. Look at this, my fancy new cup that I got from my fiance. That's good. I was getting dehydrated, so that's why I have that there. It's going to be my Illusionist Michael Howell live cup. Okay. More science! I'm so excited. We're going to do some more science for you guys. And actually, we had other science experiments uh, for you that were planned. Uh, but then I realized I should practice those a little bit more. Uh, so, what you're going to need is a candle. You're going to need a lighter or a match or whatever you want to use to light up your candle. And again, children, if you're doing this, please make sure you get adult supervision. And remember, guys, I am a trained professional. Do not try this at home. No, actually, in this case, you can't try it at home. I was just being a dork. All right. And then you're going to need, I always say this on skewers, right, Jerrica? Jer yes. Jerrica? Jerrica? Skewers. So as you can see in this video, um, the skewer is too long. So if you want, uh, and they come out to this size, you're going to want to break your skewer down to a little bit smaller. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to stick the skewer into the candle. Sorry, mom and dad, for that. It, the wax will fill in that hole that you're making. I promise. Then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get construction paper. So what I have here is you can use any kind of construction paper, just a nice construction paper pad. And you're gonna wanna get scissors and cut out a little swirl, all right? So then when you're done, the swirl is gonna look a little something like that. And I know this is black, so that's not a very good, I'll hold it up to my shirt. Woo! No, this isn't in 3D. Okay, so you're gonna want the swirl. It's a good thing I'm wearing a red shirt so you guys can see that. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the swirl, you're going to want to balance it like so, making sure it's going around a piece of the wood. So the cool thing about this is when you light this candle on fire, it's going to do like a thing where it just moves, like a swirl effect. And hopefully you guys can see it in the video. Ow, I just burnt my finger, so don't do that, guys. Hold on here. Hold on, I'm gonna take this off and then put the swirl on once I get this candle lit. This is the hardest part of the thing, guys. Be careful, this is why I said adult supervision, and I'm an adult and I need to be supervised. That's for sure. Uh, my mom should come over to supervise me. All right, here we go, guys. Do not catch the paper on fire. And I say that from experience. What? Oh, it just stopped, hold on. That just looks like magic if I hold my hands like this. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. I think what happens is you have to get it balanced. Super on the money. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's pretty cool. And I'm sitting back just because I don't want to mess it up. But did you see, you have to get it perfectly balanced. So it might take a few trials and errors. The swirls have to be cut a certain size and there has to be just a small piece at the top. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Um, to to make it work. So it's gotta be just right. So it might take a few trial and error practices, but I thought that was pretty cool. So if you guys, if you guys try some of these science experiments, please uh, go to Magician Michael Howell on Facebook, my Facebook page, and share those posts uh, of videos of you guys doing these um, science experiments 
on there. Uh, so now what I have here is some water. I'm gonna, I don't know how you guys are gonna see this very well, but I'm gonna put some pepper in here. Uh, this is a good one, especially in the times, because we, we gotta wash our hands, guys. We don't wanna catch the virus. So make sure uh, you uh, wash your hands. You need water, a little bit of pepper, and no, I'm not doing a cooking show. Can you guys even, can you see this on the camera? I don't know, I hope you can. Um, if not, just watch and then try at home because the results are pretty flipping cool um, as far as the experiment goes. I don't know if, if I can, if you can see that on camera or not. Can't really zoom in. Here, Jericho, do you want to get that closer right there to the camera, show it? There we go. Lift it up a little bit. All right, you guys see the pepper in there? Jericho's gonna do this experiment. Jericho, now put your hand in there, show it off. So if you put your hand in there, lift it up a little bit more so they can see it. The pepper just stays. You can see the little specks, but with a little bit of soap, this is why you guys, kids, you need soap because watch watch the, the speckles. Hold it up a little bit. What happened right there, guys, is when you pour the soap in there, the pepper spreads and expands and it washes away all the dirt or in this case, the filth of the pepper. So I thought that was pretty cool. And you could see it just a little bit. It was nice she came over here. And thank you, Jerrica, for your help um, to see that. Uh, it was really cool. And that's kind of like a magic trick. If you think about it, science and magic are very um, uh, intertwined as far as um, you know things go. Now, uh, I'd like to again uh, take this moment and thank Hula Frog for sponsoring this show and again, uh, I, I forgot in the beginning to thank my brother uh, Brandon for the opening music and my brother Luke for uh, doing the editing of the opening video. Uh, right now, I'm going to show you guys a magic trick. Uh, this time, I don't want you guys to try this at home because it's going to involve much bigger flame than what you guys just saw. And as you can see, that flame right there was big enough <laughs> to where uh, I still burnt my finger, but that's okay. I burned my finger as a magician, you know, a lot more than you expect, especially since I don't only do magic, but I'm also a sideshow entertainer. And I also eat fire, juggle fire, uh, staple things to myself. I'm a little bit of a crazy man. My mom loves me for it. But yeah, so uh, right now, uh, I hope you guys enjoy. My lovely magic assistant, Cherica, is gonna come over here. And we are gonna show you one of my favorite magic tricks using some fire. So what I'm gonna do is I have an empty pan here. Put the flame on there. And I'm gonna do it back here because I think you guys can see if I do it back here. I'm gonna put the, woo, there's a big flame in there guys. You guys can see it. And the magic words of the day are gonna be abracadabra if you're if you're uh wanting to see the magic words count three ready one two three abracadabra and ladies and gents we have three of the cutest little baby hamsters look at that lovely jerick is gonna take them one at a time make sure they're safe they're gonna crawl on the table look at that one <laughs> aren't they so cute oh look at this one's just running the table adorable Save my life! You know, you always wonder what their little brains are thinking. They're so cute. So, big round of applause for some of the newest family members there. Our hamster family. We're getting more and more hamsters. Uh, and uh, before you know it, I'm actually going to do a, an entire act. You know, you guys have seen bird acts. Well, I'm going to do an act with hamsters. So I'm going to do a hamster routine where I make lots of hamsters appear. It's going to be really cool. Um, and uh, you'll see that at the Burger Performing Arts Center at the show uh, Magical Journey. Now, uh, what makes magic work? Uh, what is an important thing uh, that magicians need? Now, I should say illusionist. Uh, really, one of the things we need is magic assistance. Uh, in my case, I use a magic assistant a lot. And... Uh, I would like to, uh, Jerrica, Jerrica, can you come on the screen, please? I would like uh, to have you come on screen. And uh, we're gonna ask Jerrica about what it is like to be a magic assistant. Now, from my perspective, I'm gonna tell you guys what I think a magic assistant uh, does, and then, you know, Jerrica can kind of give her opinion on it. Um, but honestly, I think a magic assistant does a lot of stuff. Uh, they're a good, they distract, 
and they have to be beautiful. Uh, they model products, they appear, they disappear, they fly, they levitate. And a lot of the times what you guys don't re uh, know is they're working and making the mechanisms and the tricks happen, you know. They're, they're working harder than the magician most of the time. In fact, uh, they're making the magician look good. So I hate to call magic assistants magic assistants, but I do like to call them magicians. Um, because magic assistants are just as important and are just as much magicians as the magicians uh, in the show. Uh, and I don't really like the whole idea of assistants. But if you guys want to go and like the fan page for the assistant page, it's, uh, what is it called? Assistant Magicians? Uh, Illusionist Michael Hall, Assistant, assistant magicians. magicians. It's a very long name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they have their own page where they promote and, and you can go on Facebook and like that as well. Um, so like I know when you you started out, she's an amazing dancer. She does ballet. Um, like, what was some of the challenges like when you started, uh, like doing your first magic show? It's a lot more acting than people think. With dance, dance you still act, but it's more focused on dance. With assistants, you're always smiling and always happy, and you have to act way more than anybody would expect. So it's a lot of acting. So that's the one thing like a, a lot of performers or like even models or, or people in, in, in Tucson or outside of Tucson really need to learn is that whether you're going to be a magic assistant, uh, you should learn multiple different things. Acting skills, dance skills, uh, modeling. Uh, and if you're in the modeling business, you should learn acting, magic, dance, uh, you know, you name it. The more you learn, the better off a, a, a better model you're going to be or the better uh, performer you're going to be, whatever you want to do as far as, you know, being in the arts, as far as performing arts go, the more skill sets you have, the better. Um, and, and another thing is, like, before we came up with the, the idea that you were, like, the magician, like, it, it didn't feel as good as well just saying, oh, well, that's my assistant. It feels better, you know, having that title, I'm a magician as well. Um, and I think you feel and agree. Makes you feel more included in what's yeah. going on besides, oh, you're just there. Yeah, because honestly, like, I think the one thing that frustrates me about any illusionist or magicians when they have uh, magic assistants is that they're just like, oh, yeah, and they're, you know, they're here, but you don't, I don't want people to know how much they do. <laughs> they do a, they do all the work <laughs> and make us look good. So, awesome, Jericho. We're going to move on. All right. And I'm going to teach you guys a magic trick. That's going to be fun. Um, right. Let's see how, do you know how much time we have right now? The dogs are under the table. They're, they're being adorable. All right. How much time do we have here? Seven minutes. Uh, seven minutes. So what we have here, we got one jack, two jacks, three jacks, four jacks. Woo! Four jacks. They're all going to pile up right here. I got my fancy. Look at my close-up pad right there. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take and put the jacks on top. I forgot what I was doing there. <laughs> and then I'm going to put the, uh, the jacks inside of the deck. They're going to go and they're going to rob a candy store because guess what? Candy is flipping awesome. So we got multiple level candy store. We got one, two, two levels, three levels. Uh, we'll put that one right there. And the last one's going to be the getaway driver right up top. Snap, they all run up to the top because that's where the getaway driver is. And believe it or not, guys, they have to get on top. They run one two three four all to the top now this is a very basic magic trick i'm going to show you guys how this trick works very simplistic yeah you're going to need one two three cards this is one uh you might have seen a little flash earlier of how it worked that's okay i wasn't trying to fool you with this trick uh i was just trying to give you guys a demonstration on how to do a trick um so i'm not too concerned because it's kind of one of those you want to walk up and have prepared when you're performing um, so you want to pretend like you have one card, but really you have three cards behind the, the jack. So you have one jack, two jacks, three jacks, four jacks. Put the jacks on top of the pile. And then when you're pretending to put the jacks in the different levels, that's really a queen. That's not really a jack. That's really another card. See? So you're putting the different cards. That's a different card. But really what you've done is you've left all four jacks on top. So when you're pushing the cards in, really, 
all you're doing is you're pushing different cards into the deck. So that's a fun little card trick. Uh, get your own set of cards. It doesn't have to be, it could be a dollar store deck. And, uh, you know, practice, practice, practice. Um, and again, that's one you can walk up and do for your friends and your family. Uh, now, uh, I'm gonna show you guys another magic trick and then I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, more about one of my other dreams and, and things that I wanna do with my life and that I have already done with my life. Uh, but what we have here is we have a, a fancy bandana. Nothing there. I'm gonna use my teeth because it's fun. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just a lot of fun. Man, it's weird doing this sitting down. So now what I've done is I've created a little bag there. I'm gonna have my magic assistant hold a little bag. Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something very exciting. Hold on, what is, oh, that's my hand. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Let's see if I can, wait, hold on. Oh wait, no, that's my hand. Here, let me just open it up real quick. You smell good, by the way, that was... Thank you. All right, All right hold on, I'm gonna show off the bandana again. Woo-hoo! All right, lovely bandana. All right, I'm gonna create the bag one more time. All right, instead of having her hold it, like I said, it's weird performing this sitting down. Oh wait, it's my hand again. Maybe I should have practiced this one. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. What the heck is that? There we go. Now, <laughs> she's like, oh my God, it's a spider. This right here, guys, <laughs> this is my friend. This is Antigone. Antigone is a spider that I got not that long ago. Oh, it's okay. Uh, and what's cool is she has uh, gotten really good about uh, being very friendly. Oh, she's gonna go back there. We're gonna say goodbye to Antigone. Bye, Antigone. Um, but uh, she, she was a rescue, and in fact, let's, I'm gonna talk about rescuing. I uh, owned a rescue called Rose Ranch Animal Rescue. I started it when I was about, I don't remember, like 15, 16, and it all started because my dad was a huge animal lover, um, and I'm an animal lover, and so growing up as a kid, we rescued animals, and uh, then it became a big organization. It was a 501c3 for a while, which is a nonprofit status. And uh, then we lost it because I don't know how to file for a 501c3 nonprofit status. I, I messed up the paperwork. I'm uh, more uh, about the animals. I know how to take care of them and I um, know like all the vet stuff. Uh, we rescue anything from dogs, cats, rabbits, hamsters, farm animals, domesticated animals, and sometimes we would rescue wildlife with the help from some, some people that are professionals that worked at many different zoos and places uh, in Tucson and outside of Tucson. So uh, yeah, so uh, what we're trying to do is become a nonprofit again. Uh, and to do that, we need about $500 cash. So... Uh, we got to fill out paperwork and then spend $500. So if you guys want to go to illusionistmichaelhowell.com, on there are some amazing t-shirts um, that have been designed and made by Seven Heads uh, Print Shop. They're a t-shirt company in the town and they also do hats and a whole bunch of cool uh, things. So thanks Seven Heads for uh, working on those for us and printing them. For a $45 donation, you will get mailed to you a free t-shirt uh, it's awesome. And then I believe for a $10 donation, you can get a picture of me with one of the rescue animals and uh, autographed. Uh, hey, it's $10 and we appreciate it. And that's what we can afford to give. Uh, and then if you do uh, above, uh, if you do like a $50 donation, $60 donation, um, obviously you'll get both. <laughs> so that's pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, so go to illusionistmichaelhowell.com. We also have a Rose Ranch, Animal, uh, Rose Ranch Animal Rescue Facebook page as well. So uh, we're, we're almost uh, about out of time, but I wanted to uh, tell some cheesy jokes. That's right, some cheesy jokes uh, to kind of get the show over with. So every uh, Saturday I will tell some really bad, dumb, lame joke and then you can tell your friends i learned this from illusionist michael Howell. okay jerica you're gonna be my uh 
I don't know, what did he say, person here? Uh, hey, Jerrica, did you hear about the angry magician? Nope. He pulled out his hair. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that was really bad. This one's more for the kids. Uh, okay, Jerrica, what do you call a magic owl? What do you call a magic owl? Houdini! <laughs> All right, guys, well, that's it for the terrible jokes of the night. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. Next Saturday at 4.30, we will be back. And uh, I promise we'll do some more fun stuff. Maybe I'll walk on glass, eat fire. You never know what each episode is going to bring. And I am so excited. Our guest next week is going to be Mark Saunders. He is a personal trainer here in Tucson, and he has some tips for you guys on what to do and how to exercise while being quarantined so you don't have to use all of that crazy fun workout equipment you have to use at the gym. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much and I will see you guys next Saturday.